today I am going to explain the limits of artificial intelligence. The limits are nothing but the criticism to artificial intelligence. There are many philosophers as well as scientists, they have raised view against artificial intelligence. It is because of the way artificial intelligence has explained the concept of mind is not acceptable to many philosophers as well as many scientists. Because the way they have explained it is a kind of as if way of explanations and it is a kind of mechanistic explanations. The AI scientists are limiting uh, the concept of, of mind. Uh, the critic of AI shows that uh, the limits of artificial intelligence, the computer science working for artificial intelligence design uh, the appropriate hardware and programs which simulate uh, the human mind. Uh, for them the mind is the software and the brain is the hardware in which mind uh, works. Uh, the, thus, they explain uh, the human mind on the model of a computer. The artificial uh, designed computing machines constitutes the bulk of the field as cognitive science field called artificial intelligence. Uh, these machines do not purport to replace human mind, but simulate it by various method of cognitive modeling. There are some general argument against uh, artificial intelligence. Over the past decades, as we have seen that electronics computer and uh, computer technology has made a great stride in the sphere of uh, knowledge and has replaced us in our, our dealing with the world. The computer of today are much more developed and sophisticated than the mechanical calculator of yesterday. Already computer are able to perform numerous tasks that had previously been exclusive provenience of human beings with a speed and accuracy that for outstrip anything than a human being can achieve. More the advent of computer technology uh, has given a new directions to our understanding of intelligence, thought and other uh, mental activities. We are inclined to raise such questions like what does it to think or feel to, to do any other activities, because these questions are very important questions. Besides, we may raise some other questions like to what extent our minds functionally depends upon the physical structure which they are associated and are mind subject to the laws of physics, if so what are the laws of physics. Of course, to ask for definite answer to such uh, questions would be very uh, difficult to, to reply. Uh, these questions are eminently philosophical in nature, because in philosophy of mind we are interested in understanding the nature of mind, uh, thought, intelligent and etcetera as it enables us to appreciate the notions of machines, a mind and machines intelligence. And here the AI scientists are committing two kinds of error, one is the error of functioning and uh, error of conclusion. The error of functioning uh, are due to some mechanical uh, error or electrical faults, which cause the machines to behave otherwise than it is designed to do. In philosophical discussions, one likes to ignore the possibility of such errors, because we are discussing uh, abstract machines. Uh, these abstract machines are mathematical from rather than the physical objects. By definition, they are capable of erroring the functioning. In this, we can say that machines can make mistakes. However, the machines commits error of conclusion because they can make mistakes moves in the functions and these mistakes are in the errors of arguments. And however, when it is, it is said that it is impossible for a machine to be conscious, it is not always clear to what extent that is intended to be a logical object and to what extent uh, empirical. Empirically, machines are not co conscious. But 
this cannot be proved logically. Robots are well known for duplicating human behavior. For a robot, X hypothesis is capable of behaving like a human being. We have no doubt that a human being is conscious when he or she is doing work, though a machine might do the same work. We are not inclined all the later conclusions. Thus, it is taken for granted that humans are conscious, whereas of machines we require whenever they are capable of consciousness or not. We know the questions of consciousness is appropriate in the context of human beings, but not in the case of machines. A machine is essentially distinct from a man, so far as consciousness is concerned. The machine's intelligence and machine behavior are not inductive of consciousness at all. Here the questions arise. Is it blind prejudice to accept that machines are consciousness uh, or what is they lack when they can do so many things? They do what humans do, yet they cannot be treated at par with human beings. The obvious answer to this is that the robots have no consciousness, they are only machines imitating human beings. Therefore, even if a computer does exactly what a human being does, it can never be ascribed consciousness uh, or mind, it never does anything creative or new or uh, which is something unpredictable the way human beings are doing. Its output is the result of its physical structure, its program and the input it is given. Uh, a human beings on the other hand initiates novel, creative and unpredictable thing actions. Thus, a human being stands on a different footing from the computer. Uh, this argument can be led against artificial intelligence, since there is a wide logical gap between human beings and computing machines. Computer not only lack creativity, but they lack basic capacity to learn. Many people take unpredictably as an evidence for originality and fear that if it is true, true that mentally bottoms out in, in straight forward mechanical processes, we eventually will be able to predict everything about people and at that point human life will lost its joy and mystery. Hence, we can argue that people are creativity, have conscious mind, machines have no consciousness and no creativity. Therefore, there is no mind at all. And to say that machines have mind, it is one kind of ajeep way of explaining in the mind. It is a kind of secondary sense, not in the primary sense of mind. Let us see some of the most philosophical argument which has been raised by John Searle and John Searle's argument against AI is one of the classic argument against artificial intelligence. Searle's main intention is to criticize and overcome the dominant traditions in the study of mind both materialist and, and dualist. For him, consciousness is the central to the mental phenomena. We think of ourselves as conscious, mindful, rational agents in the world and science tells us the world consists entirely of mindless physical particles. But the question is, how can we match these two conceptions? According to Searle, can it be the case that the world contains nothing but unconscious physical uh, properties, yet that it also contains consciousness? Can an essential meaningless world contains meaning? And these questions are very important according to Searle. But Searle says that he believes that mind body problem has a simple solution, uh, one that is consistent both with what we you know always in your physiology and with our common sense conception of nature of mental states uh, like pain, pains, beliefs, desire, and so on. But before presenting that solution, uh, he 
is asking a question why the mind body problem seems to intractable why do we still have in philosophy and psychology after all these centers a mind body problems in a way that we do not have to say a digestion stomach problem why does mind seem more mysterious than other biological phenomena moreover if we see sols thesis uh, that uh, his problem spills over into contemporary materialistic interpretation of issues of mind uh, materialism as questions like how should we interpret the recent work in computer science and artificial intelligence aimed at making intelligent machines more particularly does the digital computer give us the right picture of the human mind thus the central is uh, that what is the relationship between ordinary common sense explanation of people's behavior and its scientific mode of explanations so all six uh, to answer these questions in his attack on materialism in his philosophy of mind so also for a biological explanation of mind according to which mind is a biological offshoot of the brain in order to distinguish this view from other in the field so all calls it biological naturalism Uh, mental events and uh, processes are as much as part of our biological natural history as digestions mitosis meiosis enzyme secretions uh, all these things uh, the biological nat- naturalism raises many questions of its own but one of the fundamental question is what about the great variety of our mental life pains desire tickles thoughts visual experiences beliefs tastes smell anxiety fear love hate depressions and uh, elations again some of the philosophical questions which were raised by sol are like what exactly is consciousness and uh, how exactly do consciousness mental phenomena relate to the unconsciousness what are the features of the phe- mental phenomena such as consciousness intentionality subjectivity and mental causations and how exactly do they function what are the causal relations between mental phenomena and physical phenomena and can we characterize these causal relation in a way uh, that avoids epiphenomenalism sols biological naturalism provides an effective counter argument to the currently fashionable computational theory of for mind according to which the mind is a computer program according to this theory uh, the mind is the brain and the program is the hardware in short mind is a computer program implemented in brains in sol's word if we see the brain is just a digital computer and the mind is just a computer program one could summarize this view and he calls it as a strong artificial intelligence or strong ai saying that the mind is the brain as the program is, is to the computer hardware the notion of strong artificial intelligence uh, is called by dennet as we have seen already this view that uh, dennet says that this strong ai is a kind of computational functionalism both the discipline of artificial intelligence and philosophical uh, theory of functionalism converges on the idea that the mind is just a computer program for both the theory the human mind is a computational system that realizes programs that is it is a formal device that produces functions of various kinds called the mental functions it is a system which functions with digital right inputs and outputs so that the resulting activities are treated as mental activities and uh, the strong ai the strong AI, artificial intelligence have been complaining that there will be artificial brains and minds which are in every way equivalent to human brains and uh, mind here john sol has taken herbert simons view that machines that can literal think there is no question of waiting for some future machines because existing digital computer already have the same sense that you and uh, i do that is the idea of thinking machine in no more a dream but a reality hence the legitimacy 
of strong artificial intelligence. Searle so, refutes the very idea of strong AI and his argument against uh, has nothing to do with any particular stage of computer technology. Uh, it is important to emphasize this point because his temptation is, is always to think that a solution to our problems must wait on some as, as yet uncreated technological uh, wonder. This reputation has to do with the definition of digital computers and the idea of artificial intelligence and the idea of anti artificial intelligence which is underlying in it. As we know the concept of a digital computer is its operations can be specified purely formal structures and it functions in the formal structure, it functions in the sequence of symbols. Uh, symbols are 0 and 1 uh, printed on the tape, uh, but the symbols have no meaning because they have no semantics or they are not about the world. They have to be specified purely in terms of their formal or syntactical structure. By definitions, our internal mental states have a certain sort of contents. Searle so, says, in other words, the mind is more than syntax and it has semantics. The reason that uh, no computer program can ever be a mind is simply that a computer program is only syntactically and minds are more than syntactically. Minds are semantic in the sense that they have more than a formal structure, they have no content. The content you will find in the case of human mind. Searle so, presents a thought experiments about a change room argument for refuting the possibility of at strong artificial intelligence and the possibility of Turing machines and this is called the change room uh, argument and uh, his arguments are against uh, artificial intelligence and uh, against uh, Turing test. Let us see what Turing test is explaining imitation game. Uh, if you see the imitation game in the Turing test uh, includes a video signal so that uh, the interrogator can test the subject perceptual abilities. You know to pass the to total Turing test, the computer will need computer vision to perceive objects and robotic move to them. Again, the issue of acting like a human is the primary concern of the Turing test, uh, because Turing test shows that machines can interact to, with, with human beings and uh, the way human beings interact among themselves. That is to say that a machine can behave the way the human beings. And does. Turing said that and this kind of things is possible with the help of imitation game. Uh, the Turing test proposed that the computer should be interrogated in the place of human beings. Turing test deliberately avoided directly physical interaction between interrogator and uh, computer the because physical limitations of a person necessary for intelligence. Because in the case of Turing test, if we see that Turing has explained this imitation game and this imitation game is played by a man and a woman and an interrogator uh, who may be of either sex. Uh, the interrogator stays in apart from uh, the other room and the object of the game of the interrogator is to determine which of the other two is the man and which is the woman. And he, he or she will, will ask the questions that uh, the interrogator is allowed uh, to put questions to a, a and B, a man or a woman. It is the object of uh, in the game is to try to cause C to make the uh, wrong identifications and the, the his or answer uh, therefore might be give you any kind of wrong informations because the tones of voice may not help the interrogator. The answer should be written or better still be type written. The ideal arrangement is to have a teleprinter for perfect communications. Alternative one and intermediately can repeat the questions and answers. The object of the game for the second player B is to help the interrogator. Uh, the best strategy for her is probably to give truthful answers. Uh, she can add to her answer such uh, things like I, I am the woman, uh, do not listen to him. But it is of no avail as the man can make similar remark. Now, we, we may ask the questions what will happen when machines will take the part of the A in the game. Uh, will the interrogator decide wrongly as often when a game is played like as he does when the game is played between man and woman? This Turing thesis plays vital role. From this 
imitation to Turing test and Turing test to imitations. This is one kind of important thesis and Turing has been arguing that the possibility of uh, man machines and here Turing thesis says that the interrogator and the questions and responses to humans and the computers and he says that I believe that at the end of the century the use of words and general uh, educated uh, opinion will have altered so much that one will be able to speak of machines thinking without expecting to be contradictory. And to this thesis, John Searle has used his change room argument and he says that it is very difficult to imitate or simulate the human mind the way during predicting, but he is denying and he has been criticizing that Turing thesis is impossible and that impossibility he has shown in in his the change room argument. He asks us questions to imagine that the computer programmers have written a program that will enable to simulate to understanding of Chinese. For example, if the computer is given a Chinese, it will match the question with its memory or database and produce appropriate answer to the questions in Chinese. Suppose that the computer's answer are as good as those of native Chinese speaker, then the question is does the computer literally understand Chinese in the way the Chinese speaker understand the Chinese. Again let us imagine that someone is locked in a room with several baskets full of Chinese symbols. However, let us imagine that he or she does not understand a word of Chinese and he or she is given a rule book in English for manipulating these Chinese symbols. The rules specify the manipulation of symbols purely formally that is in terms of their syntax, but not their semantics. So, the rules might say take a squiggle, squiggle sign out of basket number 1 and put it next to squiggle squiggle uh, sign from basket number 2. Suppose that some other Chinese symbols are passed into room and he is given further rules for passing back Chinese symbols out of the room. Suppose that unknown to him, the symbols passed into the rooms are called the questions by the people outside the room and the symbols he passes back out of the room are called answer to the questions. Further, the questions are so good at designing the program in the Chinese room can easily manipulate symbol so that very soon the answers are indistinguishable from those of native Chinese speaker. In this case, man the Chinese room manipulates Chinese symbols mechanically without understanding what they mean, yet his answers are indistinguishable from those of native Chinese speaker. The above situation shows that a computer has syntax, but no semantic indeed understanding a language having mental states at all uh, involves more than just having a bunch of formal symbols, it involves having meaning attached to those to those symbols. Add a digital computer, a defined above cannot have more than just formal symbols, because it operates as Saul says in terms of its ability to implement programs as these programs are purely formal, they cannot have semantic content. The supporter of AI argues that we can feed the understanding of Chinese into a robot. If the robot operates Chinese symbol property, would not that be enough to guarantee that that understand uh, Chinese? Charles replies that robot lacks consciousness understanding, even if though it might be behave exactly as if it understands Chinese, it would still have no way of getting from syntax to the semantics of Chinese. And thus, there is no way that the support of strong AI can argue that the mind consists of purely formal and or syntactical or syntactic operations and the mind is nothing but a computing machine. So, all Chinese argument is concerned with the issue of understanding and the question of questions whether an appropriately or sophisticated computer actions can be said to have mental properties. It is concerned with 
some programs that purport to simulate human understanding by providing replies to questions in Chinese by following uh, purely formal rules. However, despite the appearance of understanding that is involved in the computational output when it performs the computations, computation understanding is actually experienced by the computer performing manipulations that enact these computations. Searles argues that mental quality of understanding cannot be just computational matter. It is because the computer is unable to duplicate human intelligence though it has the ability to simulate the latter. Here the key distinction is between the duplications and simulation and no simulation by itself ever constitutes duplications. At the end of the argument, he says that it is very difficult to make the distinctions because computer programs are non biological, cognition is biological, no non biological computer program can exercise biological cognitions. Arguments from semantic computer programs are purely syntactic, cognition is semantic, syntax alone is not sufficient for semantic, no purely syntactical computer program can exhibit semantic cognitions. But Turing in his paper computing machinery and intelligence uh, suggested that the machine intelligence in the form of uh, imitation game and uh, that as we have seen uh, accordingly if a computing machine can give a response to questions that make it impossible for us to distinguish this computer from fellow human beings then we can test whether a machine can uh, think or not. So, also objection to Turing test on the ground that uh, normal criteria we apply in ascribing intelligence to persons are based on behavioral, biological and phenomenal evidence. According to him, the normal human beings have intentionality, consciousness and free will which computers lacks. In effect to this, he says that the way Turing machines we have been explaining is not acceptable to explain the concept of mind because computer program is not sufficient for the possession of our kind of mentality. A mere exhibition of a formal accurate operation does not suffice to make the operation intelligent in the human sense. The fact that human beings have intelligent operations of the mind is biological conditions and cannot be transformed to non-human machines. And uh, these are the some of the arguments of John Searles and uh, these uh, arguments are going against the uh, possibility of strong artificial intelligence and Turing machines. Although there are some more uh, discussions on John Searles uh, thesis on biological naturalism which uh, my colleague uh, Professor Ranjan Panda will be explaining. Uh, now, we will see the second argument against AI which has been raised by uh, Hilary Putnam and, uh, and Hilary Putnam's uh, argument against artificial intelligence plays vital role to argue against artificial intelligence. And in this sections, we shall discuss the reasons that led Putnam to propose the functionalism as a theory of mind supporting artificial intelligence and the reason is subsequently led him to abandon it. In the first place, Putnam was arguing for the existence of the functionalistic theory of mind and after sometimes he is arguing against the artificial intelligence and the possibility of functionalistic model of mind. Although he has proposed two model of mind, isomorphic model, model of mind which is lie, which is one kind of functionalistic theory of mind and multiple realizability model of mind which is also another model of mind. Because of the way he is going for and going against the functionalistic model of mind or artificial intelligence model of mind. In this way, we have divided the Putnam's view into two categories. Firstly, one is early Putnam and secondly is later Putnam. In the case of in the early Putnam shows that uh, human being is an automation, mind is a computing machines 
The latter Patnam, however, has found that his earlier thesis was wrong as mind can never be reduced to a machines. But he says that functionalism is the view that mental states are defined by their causes and defects. It holds that what makes an inner state is not an intriguing property of the state, uh, but rather its relation to sensory simulation input uh, to the other state and to behavior output. And according to the functionalistic, all these functional states are multiple realizable in different kind of machines. And the development of in computer science has given inputs to functionalism. First, the distinction between software and hardware suggested that the distinction between uh, functions and uh, structures. Secondly, since computers are automated, uh, they are demonstrate how inner states can be causes of output in the absence of a homunculus. Thirdly, the Turing machines provided a model of functionalism according to Turing machine functionalism. Each psychological state is identical to a Turing machine state. This Turing functionalism is largely developed by early Putnam. Thus, in short, functionalism may be defined as a theory that explains mental phenomena in terms of external input and the observable output. It explains mind as complicated machines as we have seen in the section of on functionalism. In this connection, Putnam points out that the traditional mind weight problems are wholly linguistic and logical in character. All these relating to mind body problems are concerning the computing systems capable of answering questions about its own structure and have nothing to do with the unique nature of subjective experiences. One kind of uh, puzzle that is uh, discussed sometimes in connections with the mind body problem is the puzzle of the privacy. In the functionality theory of mind, however, privacy as a category as a category disappears altogether as there are no qualia any more linked with the human mind. Now, the questions does a computing machine have intelligence, consciousness, so on in the way human beings do? According to Putnam, since mind is a, a Turing machine, the whole human body is a physical uh, system obeying the laws of Newton and physics. The universe as a whole as a machine too. Thus, Putnam's argument shows that the whole human body is at least metaphorically a machine. Uh, Putnam has taken the robot to be a psychological isomorphic to a human being. However, it can be seen that this is not actually possible because there is the epistemological, metaphysical and moral arguments so that there is no isomorphic relationship between mind and machines, uh, machines and mind. And this isoformic relations you will find in the case of program and its hardware, but not in the case of mind and uh, machines. Therefore, there is no isomorphic relationship between mind and machines. Uh, and he says that we cannot simulate the human mind and we cannot duplicate the human mind, because there is a distinction between life and consciousness. And this view he has taken from Paul Ziff and a robot is not living being a living entity, uh, so cannot be conscious. And this semantic connections uh, shows that a robot is not alive. Thus, from Paul Jeeves argument, it is clear that Putnam is wrong in holding in that there is no isomorphic relation between mind and the robots. The theory that he proposes provide a complete description of our psychological state as a Turing machine is a utopian project, because Putnam says that oh, while arguing against AI artificial intelligence, the latter Putnam points out that pessimism about the success of AI in simulating human intelligence amounts a pessimism about possibility of describing functions of the brain. Uh, the latter Putnam mentions that functionalism is incompatible with our semantic externalism. 
because the mentalistic view of mind does not square with meaning and representation developed with the semantic theory. The semantic theory possesses an externalist relation between meaning and external world. Putnam takes meaning not as a mental or a psychological content, but as a content conditioned by the external world. Putnam has rejected the compositional view of mind on the ground that literary Turing machines would not give a representation of the psychology of human beings and animals. For him, functionalism is wrong in holding that this thesis that propositional attitude is just a compositional state of the brain. Uh, for example, to believe that there is a cat on the mat is not the same thing that there is no physical state or compositional state believing that there is a cat on the mat. Therefore, it is not right to hold that propositional attitudes are semantically or conceptually reducible to computational predicates. According to Potnam, this is impossible because propositional attitudes express to the intentional state that is to say that they refer to the various states of the world. Uh, therefore, uh, according to Potnam, functionalist is wrong in saying that semantic and propositional attitudes predicates are semantically reducible to compositional predicates, which, which can be realized in a physical system like the human brain. There is no reason why the study of human cognition could require uh, that we try to reduce cognitions either to computation or to brain processes. The reduction approach of functionalism gives one kind of inadequate picture of the human mind and it, it gives one kind of insufficient explanation on the mind and this inadequate and uh, not sufficient explanation on the mind is not acceptable to Putnam and Putnam says that uh, neither any kind of isomorphic nor any kind of multiple realizability uh, model of mind existing in the thesis which have a proposed completely wrong. And this thesis may give one kind of picture of to understand the scientific explanation on mind, but it is not explaining uh, the theory of mind which we have shown. We will see uh, some of the refuge argument against artificial intelligence and uh, Herbert Dreyfus is one of the computer scientists and one of the most important philosopher. Dreyfus argument against AI. Uh, Dreyfus shows that and uh, what computer streets cannot do, two books are classic books which are against the limitations of artificial intelligence. The, in these two books, he argues that the research in artificial intelligence was based upon mistaken assumptions which include psychological, epistemological, biological, ontological assumptions about the nature of human knowledge, understanding and we will see now all these uh, assumptions and all these assumptions uh, are based on in different ways. Psychological assumptions is that the mind can be uh, viewed as a device operating on its bits of the mind according to a former rule. Thus, in psychology the computer as a model of mind is conceived of by the cognitive scientist. The epistemologization is that all knowledge can be formalized in a term of logical uh, relations and more exactly in terms of Boolean functions. The logical calculus which govern the way the bits of related according to rules. A biological assumption is that brain has uh, neurons which operate so as to process information in the brain according to neural network. The ontological assumption is that the computer model of mind presupposes that all relevant informations about the world, everything essential to the production of intelligent behavior must in principle be analyzable as a set of situation predetermined elements. The psychological, epistemological, biological and ontological assumptions has assumptions have this in common. They assume that man must be a device which calculates according to rules of data which takes the form of atomic facts. Dreyfus argues that all these assumptions can be criticized on philosophical grounds, each assumption leads a conceptual difficulties. He says that philosopher of science one finds that an assumption that machines 
can do everything that people can do followed by an attempt to interpret what this body boards for the philosophy of mind while among moralists and theologians one find a last ditch retrenchment to such highly sophisticated behavior as moral choice, love and creative discovery claim to be beyond the scope of any machines. The assumption that machines can do everything that human beings can do is definitely false as a human capacity exceed that of machines. All these ever mentioned assumptions because they are more than they can prove the idea of that human mind functions like a digital computer is according to Dreyfus inadequate and misleading. Dreyfus in his article on misrepresenting human intelligence points out that the research in AI or artificial intelligence has misrepresented the nature of intelligence because it emphasizes that the computers have capacity to understand language processing, pattern recognition, the problem solving etcetera, but this is only a poor imitation of what human beings can naturally do. Deputies point out that AI field of research dedicated to using digital computer to simulate intelligent behavior soon came to be known as artificial intelligence. One should not mislead by the name, no doubt an artificial nervous system sufficiently linked to human one and uh, uh, with the other features such as sense organs and a body would be intelligent, but the term artificial does not mean that doctors in artificial intelligence are trying to build an artificial man. Some of the lectures I will be explaining in the next lectures.